Hi scholars, let's look at TEEK 4.4D. I can use strategies and algorithms, including the standard algorithm, to multiply up to a four-digit number by a one-digit number and to multiply two-digit number by a two-digit number. Strategies may include mental math, partial products, and the commutative, associative, and distributive property. For this video, I am just going to focus on partial products and distributive property only. If you want to learn how to do the standard algorithm, that's another video. You need to look at T4.4D, 4 4 and in the side, it'll say multiplying standard algorithm. This video is T4.4D, 4 4 partial product, and distributive property. So let's get started. I want to start with the distributive property. So the distributive property is breaking apart a number and multiplying it by the other number. So this is the standard algorithm, which you should know how to do by watching from my previous videos. So in distributive property, you're going to actually take this and break this apart using expanded form. You don't always have to do expanded form, but I feel like expanded form is the easiest way. So some people might say, oh, 200 something plus 100 something plus 50 something plus 12, you know, but... Um, Distributive property is strictly taking this number and breaking it apart using expanded method, expanded notation. So this in expanded notation would be 300 plus 60 plus 2. Okay, you're going to put that in parentheses. And then because this is times 5, you would put the times 5 over here. Okay, so you will now, the distribute part is taking 5 and multiplying it by 300, taking 5, multiplying by 60, taking 5, and multiplying by 2. So 5 times 300. I hope from my other video where you learn how to multiply by tens and hundreds, you notice there's a shortcut. All you got to do is 5 times 3 is 15, and there are two zeros. And then 5 times 60, well, 5 times 6 is 30, and then there's one zero, and then 5 times 2 is 10. So now you have 1,500 plus 300 plus 10. I always recommend that you add them up and down. So your answer is 1,810. Let's look at some more examples. So distributive property for 825 times 7. So first step is break this up into expanded form. So 800 plus 20 plus 5. This will be in parentheses. And then this times 7, you can put it here or here. It doesn't matter. And then the distributive part. What I always do when I'm first teaching this to students is, you know, draw the arrow to show we're doing 7 times 800. So that'll be 56 with two zeros. 7 times 20, which is 140. And then, seven, whoops, 7 times 5 is 35. And so then I would rewrite it up and down like this. Now, I always tell students that when they're first learning to see it each part separately, because sometimes like I've noticed, especially like on um, tests that um, I give throughout the year, the answer choices, like it'll say, which of the following is not a way to show 825 times 7? So it'll have it this way, and it'll have it this way, and then like it'll have another way, and then obviously the wrong way. And a lot of my students will look at this and be like, well, where did this come from? You know, I know this one, this is distributive property. I know that one because that's another way to break apart 825. But I have no idea what this is. So I make my students write this so they can see, well, this is a result from this. And that's where that came from. And that is another way to break apart 825 times 7. So when my students are first learning how to do this, I make them write this and this and then add it up and down. That helps. And then gradually I tell them, okay, skip this step altogether. And, you know, 
7 times 800, write it like this. 7 times 20, write it over here. 7 times 5, write it over here. And then you just add them up and down. Let's look at a larger number. So 7,294 times 3. So this would be 7,000 plus 200 plus 90 plus 4 times 3. So 3 times 7,000 would be 21,000. Make sure you count your zeros. I've had students um, get the wrong answer because they were off by one zero. And then obviously when you do the addition, then you don't get the correct answer. 3 times 200 is 600. 3 times 90 is 270. And then 3 times 4 is 12. So 21,882. Let's do one more. I want you to do just the first part, 639 times 2. Write it in expanded form. So just the expanded form would be 600 plus 30 plus 9. Okay? And then you want to do times 2. Now the next part, I want you to press pause, and I want you to see if you can distribute the 2 times each number. You can list it this way if you want and then up and down or just straight up and down if you feel like you're catching on really quick. Press pause and then press play when you're ready. So 2 times 600 is 1200. 2 times 30 is 60. 2 times 9 is 18. 1000, oh sorry you can't even see the answer. 1278. One thing I forgot to mention is that you can always check your answer by doing the standard algorithm. So like after you get your answer, all you got to do is write it on the side and do normal multiplication to check. Now, I'm going to tell you and be honest, as an adult, I don't use the distributive property. It's just something to help build your number sense with. And, you know, sometimes like if you don't have a calculator, you can do distributive property in your head if, you know, you don't have paper, pencil and calculator to figure it the right way. But um, it's, it's more of building number sense and really understanding, you know, it's 400 groups of five, it's 80 groups of five, nine groups of five, and, you know, it's put together. And that's really what you're doing here. When you're doing five times nine, you're doing five groups of nine, which is what you do here. When you do five times eight, you're doing five groups of 80, which is what that eight would break up to. And then when you do five times four, you're doing five groups of 400. Your answer will already be in the hundreds place and the thousands place. That's why we don't have to do the zeros. But over here, you have to. So go ahead and press pause and then press play when you're ready. Read and check. Okay, so 400 plus 80 plus 9 times 5. 5 times 4 is 2,000. This 20 came from 5 times 4, or that 0 came from 5 times 4, so that's why there's three zeros in my answer. These two zeros come here. Then 5 times 80 is 40. Well, 5 times, sorry, 5 times 8 is 40, and then there's the 0. Then 5 times 9 is 45. So 2,000 plus 400 plus 45 equals 2,445. And you can check it. And my answers match up. I want you to do this one completely from start to finish and check it using standard algorithm. Press pause, work the problem. Press play when you're ready to check. Okay, so let's get started. So we have here 6,000 plus 100 plus 90 plus 4, and all of that's multiplied by 3. 3 times 6,000 is 18,000. 3 times 100 is 300. 3 times 90 is 270. Whoops. 3 times 4 is 12. So I got 18,582. I'm going to check real quick. And my answers match up. Actually, no, they don't. 
19, 27, 28. Sorry, that's a 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, now they match up. These are the last two that I want you to do and check with standard algorithm, and then we're going to move on to partial products. So 87 times 6, so this would be 80 plus 7 times 6. 6 times 8 is 480. 6 times 7 is 42. I got 522 as my answer. This here is 200 plus 40 plus 5 times 9. 9 times 2 is 1,800. 9 times 40 is 360. And then 9 times 5 is 45. 2,205.